Hello from Tiffany University and welcome to my channel. <laughs> Today I have a very important people, person in, from my side, Dr. John Miller. Hello! Hi! Dr. John Miller, he always means so much to me because 16 years ago, he was the person who hired me <laughs> and changed my life. Okay. Right? So then, can, let you introduce yourself first so my audience know um, who you are? Well, I, I'm John Miller and I'm a professor emeritus here at Tipping University. And like Chang Mei said, I, I was here for many years. I was here for 33 years and mm -hmm. came before much of what is Tipping University existed yeah. and, and had some parts to play in building it to where it is today. And yeah. it, it, was a, it was a lot of fun doing it yeah. and you met a lot of great people along the way and one that's this dear lady. So you say you go for 30? 33 years. 30 years. Yeah. And then you retire, but you're still very active. I retired in 2000 and were kind enough to make me a professor at Dean Emeritus, yeah. but I'm still somewhat involved with yeah. the university, yes. My wife and I chair the Tiffin Society. Uh, Together, and yeah. then I, I'm also for the university what I call a designated prayer. I show yeah. up for for the big ceremonies, and I usually do the benedictions. Yeah, I know, and I always enjoy that. You put your life into education. So what's your yes. philosophy about education? Um, you know, the interesting thing about this is I yeah. really didn't start out to be in education. Okay. Uh, I went to college without a clue as to what I wanted to do. Okay. And I majored in uh, a couple of fields before I found psychology in my junior year, and so I graduated okay. with an undergraduate degree in psychology. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. But along the way, I've been doing some work with the Dean of Students Office at where I went to school, and I decided that I liked that might be interested in college personnel. Yeah. You know, like the Dean of Students Office yes. or financial aid. So I went yeah. off to Michigan State University yeah. to go to graduate school. Yeah. Uh, in, in the student affair? Well, what they call? yeah, I was in college, it was called College Student Personnel then. Now it's, okay. called, now it's called Adult and Higher Education. Yeah. It's had a whole lot of names. Yes, yes, uh-huh. But when I got there, I went to work because I needed to earn money in the yeah. registrar's office. Yeah. And, and I worked there for about three years. Yeah. And then I was offered a job as the administrative assistant to the Department of Sociology at okay. Michigan State University. Yeah. So I went over there and that's when I became involved in the academic administration side of it because okay. I was there about four years and mm -hmm. I started as the administrative assistant and left as the associate chair. Okay. Uh, so I, while I was going to graduate school, I worked for the Department of Sociology as one of the academic administrators. Wow, okay. When I graduated, I got an offer from a small school on the West Coast to come and be the Vice President for Academic Affairs. Okay. So I didn't start from the faculty and work up. Yeah. I started from the Vice Presidency and worked up to be a faculty member. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a different career path. Yeah. So I did, uh, I did the Vice President's job at, yeah. at that school. Yeah. I then went to Mercyhurst University in Pennsylvania as yeah. the Vice President. Okay. And, and that's where I met George Kidd. Um, he was another he was the vice yeah. president for business and finance. Okay. And a few years later, he he came here to Tiffin to yeah. be the vice to be the president. Okay. And asked me to come and run the admissions operation. Oh. And that's how I got here. I oh. ran admissions for a while. And, wow. Uh, and athletics and financial aid. I had all of those. And then in about 1985, 86, I became the vice president for academic affairs. For how long? Well, the first time around, I was in it for about 10. About 11 years, okay. and then I went to the faculty. Yeah. And uh, I enjoyed that. And yeah. then when Dr. Marion came, he yeah. came and asked if I would go back to being the vice president. Uh -huh. And I told him I'd be willing to do that, but only for five years. And okay. So I did it for five years, yeah. and then went. And along the way, was the dean of the business school off and on when I wasn't the vice president. Okay. And I really became a full time faculty member after that, okay. and stayed as this full time faculty member for. Uh, until I retired in 2014. Oh, so, wow. uh, 
and then along the way, you got to do a lot of things. Yeah. So, what did you see education? Do you think education is the area people should put more focus there? I, I'm a believer that not every student I've ever met should go for a four year education. Okay. All right. Okay. You know, a lot of people say, well, if you don't go to college, you can't do anything. Yeah. Uh, I've, not true. Which is not true, and okay. you know, there are, for many students, going to college is, if they've got a skill, like yeah. they've got an ability to do things with their hands, yeah. like carpentry or things yeah. like that, yeah. that if they can go to, if they can go to one of the good vocational technical yeah. schools and then go on in and, yeah. and, and engineering, mm -hmm. that that's where they, people should go and do what they, I always told students when I was running admissions, I, I would really like you to come to Tiffin University, yeah. but what I really want is for you to go where you'll be happy. Yeah. Because if you're not happy, yeah. nothing's going to go well. Yeah. That's so true. go where you're happy and yeah. where you like your classes, where you like your your student, your fellow students, yeah. where you have a relationship with the faculty beyond yeah. just sitting in front of them in a classroom. Yeah. Then you're going to enjoy your education and get something out of it. So. Yeah. It's a very, even though it's done online, yeah. it's still a very personalized thing. Mm -hmm. Whenever, you know, even when I taught at Michigan State, I might have 150 students in the yeah. class. Uh -huh. It's still, for each of them, it's it's their experience with you, even if they never really talked with you yeah. one on one. It's yeah. that experience with yeah. you that makes a difference as to whether or not they really learn anything yeah. or if they think this is a field they want to be in. Yeah. So, yeah. So along the way, I used to I made sure here that we put our best people in the first year yeah. classes so that they could recruit students from one another. Yeah. <laughs> and also, part of your job is hiring people. How do you know that person is capable? So for example, 16 years ago, we have an interview yes. uh, like this. Yes. I'm the you are the last one in my in that day of interview. Do you remember our conversation? Some of it, yes, I do. Like what? What do you remember? <laughs> I, re I, re I remember, interestingly enough, is that you at that time were using an, an American name. Yes. And I said, do you want to do that? And yeah. you said, I really don't. And I said, well, then don't do it. Be okay. Fang Mag. And so there you are. You've been Fang Mag. <laughs> Great. That, yes. That, uh, and I think part of why you came is because I said that to you. Yeah. And said, what do you want to be here that makes you comfortable? Yeah. Because yeah. I already knew I wanted you to come. Yeah. I knew that the reason I laughed is other people tell me how they reacted with you. Oh, okay. So I've already had feedback that other people thought you were great, uh, you know, and students uh, liked you and so on. I'm that's, so lucky. So that's what I need to know, all right? And we remember the same thing. Oh, yeah. so that is the one. Well, that, you know, that was way early before diversity was important. Yeah, I know. And you were working in the Asian community <laughs> yeah. in a tough city at that time in yeah. Columbus. So yeah, yeah. I knew why you had the the American type name, but yeah. I didn't think you needed it here. Yeah. All right? I know. So then, every time when I say Fang Mei, and I always remember you have me back to myself. Yes, well, you know, <laughs> that was important. I mean, Maybe. you're in a field yeah. in psychology where, yeah. where faculty members do not have an authenticity. Yes. Then why have I hired them? So I had Scott Distel, who you and I dearly love to remember. Yeah. We have Steve, mm -hmm. we have Liz. Yeah. No matter what you say about them, these are authentic human beings in the psychology program and that's what made it that's what makes it a good program. It has over three decades. You know, mm -hmm. is that the people in it are who they are and make yeah. no apologies for it. Yeah. And so and that's yeah. important. It also allows as we've gotten more and more into students. In other words, we've built much of our programs on the fact that students of different backgrounds yeah. and, different, and different religions and different yeah. ethnic groups came here because they felt comfortable. Yeah. Well, if you're going to do that, you have to hire people who are comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And you have somebody they can identify with. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of times when we come to America, people tell us, you need to have an English name. Otherwise, nobody's going to remember you. <laughs>
I think you get remembered for what you do and not what your name is. Okay. But the first impression, like we yes. even had a debate saying, do you should put English name in your resume or not? Well, and, and that's sad because that would be true. If you sent it in with with the name you were using, yeah. then people would say, oh yeah. But if you sent it in with your own name, people yeah. might say, well, you know, I don't know that we want to yeah. hire somebody. I don't know even Who's, how to say it. Yeah. yeah. And so that's unfortunate. Yeah. I think a lot of that is gone by the boards now. Mm. Not all of it. So you're um, more advanced in your time. <laughs> I don't know that we were ahead of our time, but yeah, you know, yeah, I grew up the son of a Baptist minister uh -huh. in an area that was predominantly Jewish. Okay. He was an immigrant from Scotland who lost yeah. his Scottish accent early because he lived in an Italian neighborhood. Okay when he came to America and every time he opened his mouth he got beat up. Yeah. So we decided he needed to stop sounding like he was Scott. <laughs> he said it was for self preservation. Oh, and I understand that. But those were part of my growing up experience. Okay. And uh, I grew up in a segregated state. Yeah. And did not go to school with African American children until I was in the eighth grade. Yeah. And up to that point, I didn't think many of the people where I lived even realized they were African American families. Yeah. Because we literally lived in different communities. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so I remember all of that. Yeah. And, and, I, and know how far that yeah. that we have tried to come. And in and some cases, yeah. it succeeded. So I think I think when I see the students here and the, and the and the fact that they come and they feel happy here yeah. in the middle of rural Ohio. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 yeah. It makes me feel good. So it's yeah. interesting, Southern students yeah. always try to find me. <laughs> yeah. Well, the students want to know, is there somebody there who, if I talk to, understands what I'm talking yeah. about? Uh -huh. And uh, it's hard to, you know, yeah. it's hard to know an experience if you've not lived the experience. Yeah. So after you hired me, I started coming here. Now it's my, I'm 16 years old. Yeah. <laughs> Are you satisfied whatever I do here? I do it here. Yeah. Do I live in to your expectation? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you, you, you know, I would have to say most of the people I have hired grow up into your yeah, and have exceeded them in many cases. I mean, you've written books. You're you're known throughout your profession around the world. I mean, I think that's great, and I don't think that's anything you realized would happen, yeah. or would have aspired to 16 years ago. I know. Fair I'm enough. very different people. Yes. Different person. When I see my photo, I'm like, is that me? Yeah. It looks much older than my time in myself right now. Yeah. But in that time, I'm like, oh, I'm not sure. But well, you be one of the things that happens when you come and you get to be you. You become self-confident. That's made a big difference. Yes, that really is very, very important. So, yeah. you, so you put your belief into practice when you become in a position you can hire people. Yeah. And you know, okay, now I'm going to hire people for them to be who they are. <laughs> people who I think have an opportunity to come and grow. I mean, yeah. let's face it, when I first got here, there yeah. were 300 students in two buildings. Okay, wow. Okay, and uh, we did a survey at, at one time and uh, it's 40 percent of the people that we talked to had no idea who Tiffin University was and we did it here in Tiffin yeah okay and yeah. 40 percent of the people had no idea who Tiffin was yeah in 82 by the time I did it again in 84 yeah. only 15 percent of the people had any idea so we've done real well in two years and yeah. you know we've become we've become a good solid yeah professionally oriented university that yeah. puts out really good students and yeah. There are now people I taught as undergraduates who are on the faculty here. Yeah. You know, and so that's great. And Lacey, would, and yeah. And this. Yeah. Yeah. And there's quite a few of them. And then there's a lot of people in the administrative jobs who I had as students. Yeah. You know, and so yeah. I mean, they have all found a place, found a home. Yeah. And go out and do things. This is a place that has always encouraged you. Yeah. And all faculty members. What would you like to try? Yeah. Try it. So, all right. If it works, we'll keep it. If it doesn't, we won't. But let's give it a shot. Yeah. And I think that's important. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I'm so glad that even you are in very high position, but you can lose yourself. <laughs> well, you try not to. I remember the first time I talked to Liz Victor because I hired her too, and yeah. she was telling me about forensic psychology. Yeah. Uh -huh. I had no idea. What yeah. What uh -huh. forensic psychology? Yeah. Was, but I said she was so enthused about it. I said, "But well, why don't we do it?" 
about it. But I also understood that CSI had just started playing on TV, and the term okay. forensic, yeah. to me as a marketer, had a yeah. really good ring to it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. out of that, out of that, it actually became the entire school of criminal justice and social sciences. Yeah. So, let's do this, and all the things we've decided to do along the way. Let's yeah. do this. So, I think that's been great. Yeah. So, do you see yourself from? The thing you start will be different until now. How do you see yourself? Different or similar? Oh, much different. Much, much different. different. Um, I went back to school to get a master's in business okay. because I thought it was important. Yeah. While I was working full time. Yeah. I then got involved with the accrediting association for the business programs yeah, and have right. literally traveled worldwide. Yeah, to teach, right? I also well, remember both to review schools and to teach. Yeah. I, because of my involvement with them, I've taught. Well, I've done three stints in Paris. Lovely place to spend a month and teach, by the way. Yeah, I know. Um, we started the program of our own in Romania, and yeah. I've been to Romania. All six or seven times, yeah. some of the others have been a lot more. Yeah. So we, uh, when we decided that we would reach out to Asia, I went with Dr. Liu and yeah. to China. To yeah. Yeah. And lectured at Beijing Normal. Oh, that's uh, why you experienced. Yeah, well I did lecture, they have a campus in Zhuhai. Uh -huh. Which is really hot when you're there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh -huh. then the one in Beijing. So, yeah. so because of being involved here, I've gotten to travel worldwide. Mm. I now have friends, literally, mm. worldwide. Yeah. And that's great. Yeah. So I yeah. just in contact with people from all over the world. And, yeah. I, and you know, I would have never gotten to do that. Yeah. I think if I'd stayed in other jobs at other places. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes opportunities open up and and they're a big risk. I mean, realistically, for for George Kidd and I, for yeah. him especially, you come here when he came, yeah. there was not much going on. Yeah. And when I came, we're putting our careers on one, you know, okay. and, and, like we're we're in our early, late 30s, early 40s. We're putting yeah. our careers here that if this doesn't work, we would really have no place to I go. Know. Because, you know, we, when, you know, you really haven't been anywhere. So, but, so when you move here, it's well, you got to build a university. Yeah, that was great. I mean, wow. they said, "Would you like to come and build a university?" Yeah, sure. And yeah. so I learned a lot of things about things that I wouldn't have thought on. You know, yeah. you know I've, I've learned things about what happens in physical plant. Yeah, how you build residence halls. Yeah, the feeding of students, which is an enormous operation I would never want to do. Yeah. You know. All right, but yeah. all of these things you, you get involved when you yeah. are when you are involved in the academic administration yeah. in a small place. Yeah. You learn a lot about a lot of things that you, you really pretty much have to know everything. You don't have to know, but you have to understand how it works and how it fits with what you do. Yeah. Okay. So if how you, you, you give the title to cover this different life in this new book. What's the title? What the title of this book? Yeah. If I had to write a book about there, this, I, I would probably write, okay, what's next? Oh, wow. All right. Okay. Can you give us a little bit of explanation about it? Well, now? that's how we built the place, mm -hmm. right? Okay. We're still at that stage. Yeah. We reached the point now where we said, all right, we're good at this, we're good at this, we're, yeah. good, at this, we're good at this. And what's next? What's next? Mm -hmm. The doctoral program, for example. Yeah. Been very well received. Now we look at, all right, what else? What else? All right, <laughs> what do we do with some of the things that we're now doing at the master's level in other schools? Yeah. Do we start looking at yeah. adding to that? Mm -hmm. uh, the ability to use the technology now allows us to say, let's let's find the best faculty in the world in a certain area, yeah. say forensic psych, yeah. and let's put together yeah. a doctorate. Yeah. And we've got three people we know here and eight or nine others we know around the country. And we, we could come like once a year here for a residency, but yeah. the rest of it, it's all in the online mode. And particularly at the doctoral level, that's more one-on-one -on -one education yeah. once you get first the initial set of yeah. classes, because now you're involved with the research yeah. and the back and forth. And yeah. So those are the kinds of things you look at. What's next? What What's do we next? Do? Yeah, what do we do? Wow. Is that also your life, too? 
Pretty much, yeah. Right. Um, I I notified the accrediting association in December that I was going to take myself off the active role. So oh. Just, you know, <laughs> Um, what's next? Yeah, and so now, now I, I think what's next is how do I learn to be retired? All right, you know. You never retire. Well, <laughs> you know, my father worked up until the day he died, literally, yeah. you know, yeah. in some sort of role. So yeah. now I'll look for some other things that I like to do and, yeah. and get involved with. So yeah. I do something. You know? So the, you say you retired in 2014. Yes. Now it's 2021. Yes. What did you do for these years? Um, I did some. I, well, I did a lot. I did went to Romania twice in that period okay. because I. You're still you still know, working, right? Yeah, I was at that time. Yeah. Uh, I'll go back to Romania one more time, not to teach, but I told Alex when he graduates his 20th class okay. that I'll, that if I'm physically able, I'll come for that graduation because that would be 20 plus years that we've been doing that program. That'd be really good. Uh, wow. I don't really want to go back into the classroom. Oh, really? So much. No. Do you think students need a want the wisdom from you? Well, they may want the wisdom, but I'm not up to 15 weeks. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you don't. You can be a guest lecturer. I don't mind coming either. in and spending your week, but, but you know, not like you're reaching point where you think, do I want to get up and do an eight o'clock two days a week yeah. for fifteen weeks? And the yeah. answer is no. No. <laughs> no. I've done. Yeah. Thank you very much. But as a guest speaker. But I'll do other things, you know. And, uh -huh. and uh, sometimes people ask, you know, we'll call and say, what do you think about this? What do you think about yeah. that? Yeah. I still do some of that, but I'll, you know, I'll get calls from people I know and, and ask about things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've had some places who wanted to know if I'm interested in coming and doing a short stint as an interim in this or that. And, yeah. You know, I'm really, I, I really don't want to do that right now. Yeah. Uh, sometime this week I'm going to become a great grandfather. So oh. I, so I kind of like to be around this. Yeah. You know, you know, I have, yeah. My grandson and his wife are live up in Cleveland, and their oh, yes. baby will be due sometime this week. So it'll be our first. I'm great man. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll be our first great grandchild. So wow. that's, that'll be a whole new stage. That's okay, good. what's next? Okay, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> so when you are in the graduation each year, right? Yeah. You perform that benediction. Yes. What do you have? Did you see your mind? Said is different in different year. Yes. What, what's your what do you might say in that? Well, you the nice thing about that is it's like in the, it's like in baseball. You're the closer. You're the last person. Yeah. So I can hear what the speakers have said. Okay. And how people in the audience have reacted. Yes. I can hear what the students have said. Yeah. So I can build off of what they have already done yeah. to kind of say, okay, here's where we're at. This is what we do. And, and to let them know that we will miss them. Yeah. And that they will always be part of it. And I think that's important. Yeah. That people know that. I also noticed before you did more like pray, you know, we close eye, mm -hmm. like you do the the end closure mm -hmm. pray. But then gradually you change the format a little bit, not really like pray pray, you are like blessing. Yes, it's more of a blessing and a more talk to people and yeah. uh, and try to be inclusive. Yeah. I mean, we, we have all the students from the Muslim countries. Yeah. We have all of the students, many many from China, yeah. who, who religion is not something, their grandmothers may be Buddhist, but they're not. Yeah. All right. And right. so you have a whole different audience. Mm -hmm. That, But there is... There is still among all of them a basic reverence and understanding of honesty and yeah. justice yeah. and truth yes. and the general goodness that one wants to find in each yeah. other. Mm -hmm. And so I think that my job isn't to tell them about the education they've yes. already got. I'll leave that to the academicians. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never really seen myself as an academician. I'm more of the guy that will say, okay, yes, here's all this stuff. This is what we taught you. Okay, now here's three things you have to know never why yeah. if people can't trust you then you're not going anywhere yeah. All right. so yeah. I always tell people if, if the most important thing is it that somebody says no matter what I said to dr. Miller yeah and he gave me an answer I always knew that he wasn't messing with me mm -hmm. you know, that what he said yeah. I knew he meant 
I think you think you, know, you put that on my tombstone as far as I'm concerned. I think that's the most important thing is that people trust what you say. There's yeah. all, the authenticity thing. I know. Um, sometimes it's in your best interest to tell a student that this is not the place for them. Yeah. That they need to consider other things, yeah. or it's not the place for them right now. Yeah. Yeah. I remember about four years. I've been vice president for three or four years. And we, yeah. we had a bunch of, we had students would come in the fall and, and we'd get to midterm and there'd be a bunch of them who were all Fs and just weren't really doing anything. Yeah. So one year I just said, I went over and I said to the student affairs vice president, I said, we're going over and round, and round up eight kids and send them home. Okay. And we did. Okay. And mid-semester we told them to pack for Thanksgiving oh. and don't come back. Well, the amount of studying went up astronomically yeah. at that point in time. And people thought, well, are you punishing those eight yeah. students? The answer is no, no because with the withdrawal, yeah. all the Fs go away. Yeah, okay. They're withdrawn. Yeah. They will owe their financial aid, but they will be eligible for more financial aid okay. when they decide wherever they yeah. want to go. Okay. Yeah. In other words, some people show up and they're not ready. Do I want to fail them out? No. I know. You don't want to put a lot of F in your chest. Yeah. No. <laughs> and do I want them hanging around in their residence halls? No. So. Does come lot more? Well, it, it, it has to be. I yeah. mean, sometimes you have to say to somebody who says, well, I think I want you to have this. Somebody says, I think I want to go to graduate school right yeah. after I graduate. They're not ready. And you know they're not ready. They need to go out and work some in the field and then go for a master's degree. And we have to be honest and say, you would be better served if you went to work. Yeah. All right. And I find this particularly true for people who are very narrow in their thinking. Yeah. <clears throat> because the parents told them this away. Yeah. And, they, the and even now they're graduating, they're still a little wider, but they need to be out in the workplace yeah. and get a bit more wider. Mm -hmm. The longer you're in the workplace, the wider you get, whether you want to or not. So, yeah. so I think that's important. So what's your best memory of your life up to this point? All of them. Yeah. What's the, what's the most... <laughs> I don't know that I could actually pick Think out one. one thing. I will tell you one that was important. I'm, uh, I'm at graduation, I forget what year. Okay. And a, a lady in her probably early 40s comes up and yeah. says, told me her name, which I recognized, yeah. and her son had just graduated. Yeah. I had met her when she was a single mother, and he was probably less than a year old, and she didn't think she was good enough to go back to college, and yeah. I talked to her her coming here. Oh. And she stayed and got her degree, yeah. and was professionally successful, yeah. and now he's a graduate from here. So those are the kind of memories that are. So the mother is the one you encourage, and now the son graduated. No, the son was here because his mother understood, understood you know, that this was important. But she was the one I encouraged. She yeah. did not think she could do it, and I yeah. knew darn well she could. Yeah. yeah so wow. I've never forgotten that. I know. You yeah. change people's life. Well, you try. You don't. You, you don't understand. You don't intentionally, but intentionally. And you don't understand sometimes. Yeah. I used to tell people one of the scariest part of being the vice president. Yeah. Was I'm in charge of all of the things we teach you yeah. that we know today. Yeah. And I have to think of some things to teach you that you're going to need to know when you run businesses yeah. 20 years from now. Yeah. And I don't know what the world's going to be like 20 years yeah. from now. But my job is to make the best guess. Yeah. Let's hope I'm at least half right. Yeah. All right. So that was the thing. Those are the things that kept kept you walking the floor at night, sometimes thinking, all right, we have this major. What, yeah. Here's where it is right now. Yeah. Where do my people think it's going to be in two decades? And how, how do we get ready for that? So you yeah. face, and any good faculty member understands exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. So did you find yourself sometime in your job, you're not sure, and then what can you do? What do you do when you're not sure? What do you do? Pretend you're sure? <laughs> well, you don't pretend you're sure, but you yeah. just think, of all of these options, which is the one that has the highest probability of maybe being good. I once told people that part of my heart will always be I know. in this block. Yeah. Will always be here. Yeah. I, yeah. 
I still, you know, when I walk around the campus yeah. and I'm not even here anymore, yeah. I still pick up the trash and throw it in the trash cans because I just want the place to look nice. I know. I mean, that, it's just ingrained. Yeah. Because I never feel you are God. I always feel, when I see you... That might be scary. <laughs> no, it's not scary, it feels warm. Okay. Because Thanks. you are, remember you are the one higher me. Yeah. And then we've been seeing you and then you always give me good encouragement, make me feel like, yeah, somebody behind me, you know, I can keep walking. You, you know. know, I always told my students, my job, is to be the dumbest person in the room. <laughs> What's that mean? That means I hire everybody who's way better at what needs to be done than I would be. Uh, so whenever when I sit and talk with the people in forensic psychology, yeah. I'm the dumbest person in the room when it comes to that field. Yeah, but you trust me not for them. My job is to in any conversation on anything we're really doing, I I'm the dumbest person. But my but where I'm the smartest person, I know how to make them all work together. Yeah. So to say one day in passing to body Keel, you yeah. should talk to Janet Hanna. Maybe we should take students to the Olympics. Uh, that's fine. Okay. Two decades later, we're still doing it. Yeah. You know, those kind of things. Just casual conversations yeah. with people and say, have you thought about this? Yeah. Should we do this? And yeah. So sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Yeah. yeah. But what people, how, how, how you prepare yourself get to the point? Right? I don't know that you can. All right. Okay. You can be. You can know your discipline. Okay. And you can know how to deliver a lecture. Yeah. But I've never figured out how to teach you to be nice to students. I wish I could. Mm -hmm. I've known some brilliant faculty members who weren't going anywhere okay. because they just people couldn't get along with them. Yeah. Know? And so. That's a shame, but yeah. uh, so you hire people who have an interest in the human condition. I guess is the best way to put it. Okay. Even if it's from uh, you know a marketing perspective, yeah. you know, there's there's things that you know I, I've done a lot of work in marketing. So there's things that we do sometimes that you know I think geez, we're just we're just making things attractive that people really don't need, yeah. you know. But that's what they pay us to do. Yeah. So at least let's. Try not to lie to them about yeah. it. You know, so. yeah. But then you not only bring us here, that like you make the ants feel, you know, you know, the enough nutrition for us to grow. The thing is, yeah. is that I need everybody to feel like they're really important. Yeah. The hard decisions when I have to say to one program, we can't do that because mm -hmm. I have to do this uh, first. Okay. Right. So say sometimes I have to put priorities, yeah. but not say I don't think it's important. So do you have a moment that people misunderstand you? Oh yeah, everybody and does. Then how do you handle that? Do you that hurt yourself? Yeah, sure it does. Yeah. And you and you sit down and you apologize. Okay. First of all, if I'm mad at you yeah. as a faculty member, yeah. I would never come over here. Uh -huh. I would ask you to come to see me. This is your house. Uh -huh. I'm not going to come down on you in your house. Okay. You can come to my house, okay. and I'll be happy to come down on you. That's what I need to do. So I would never, I would never do that. So when I really was concerned with a faculty member, I usually would ask them to come and see me. Okay. You know. So what's that mean? That mean it's better way to handle. If I come in here and say to you that I have a specific concern about what you're doing, yeah. You will always remember that meeting when you're sitting in oh, your office. Okay, the, the, the memory. memory. I don't want you to do that. Okay. Even if it's Makes 10 sense. to 12 years later. I okay. don't want you to do that. Okay. You remember something that happened in my office 16 years ago. Okay. That was good. Uh -huh. Suppose it had not been good. I'd rather you remember it in my oh, office and not are. in your office. Okay. So I think that's critical. Wow. Yeah. I never heard that before, but it's well, very good philosophy. Yeah. Uh, practice. So, okay, so now it's students. <laughs> students, I would bring them, you know, I've been, I've, I've, now so it depends on the student. Yeah, if, if I want to tell them something bad, uh, should I bring them to my office or I talk to them in the classroom? It depends on what it is. Okay. 
I once had a student stay after class because yeah. she had turned in a paper which was not hers. Okay. And I knew it. Okay. The reason I knew it was I read the paper the year before. Okay. By oh, another student. The same paper. So after everybody left, I talked to her about that. Okay. And said I would not accept it. And yeah. that she would take an F for that. Okay. I waited until everybody else was gone. Okay. I didn't want to bring her over to my office to do that. That was a right now type of thing. Okay. Now, if I have a concern that she's just not, something's happened this semester and you've had this, they're going downhill. Yeah. I want them in here like this so, can so we time can time find time. out and say what's, what's going, going on, on and okay. what can we do to help. Okay. Now, you know this and I know this because I majored in psychology yeah. and you're a psychologist. Yeah. We can do that. Some of our colleagues are terrified yeah. because you can say, what's going on and yeah. it all comes out when the jam has burst and <laughs> yeah. they are they don't know they don't know how many what they don't know what to do yeah secondly always have kleenex Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Always have Kleenex. Okay. You never know who's going to need them and yeah. why. You know? Wow, so, that's a good point. Yeah. So those, are, you know, those are things that you just pick up along the way. Okay. So just, just keep learning. Keep learning. Part of, it's, part of it's learning and part of it, I have to be honest, my father, as I said, was a Baptist minister. Oh, okay. I grew up with a man who would go out in the middle of the night because someone had died. Oh, okay. And I would grow up, I grew up with a man who would be called out as a fire chaplain because someone had just died in a house fire. Oh. I grew up with having to deal with death. Yeah. When you grow up in a household that lives that death as part of the everyday life experience. Yeah. You will have a different approach to life than I think anybody else does. Wow. All right. They become all your tools. <laughs> well, you, you, under you understand yeah. without trying. You understand grief more than you want to. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Your life, my eye, you're 100. You got 100. You got an A plus. <laughs> ah, thanks. You see yourself? A plus. Uh, I think it's a. I wouldn't give myself an A plus. Why? Ah, uh, because I know me way better than anybody else, you know. And, and my, you know, and the people who know you the best would say, yeah, he's okay, but he's not an A plus. You know? <laughs> I might be a B, I might be a good B plus, all oh, right, really? maybe an A minus, but I wouldn't give myself an A plus. Uh -huh. and, you know, but yeah. you know this. Yeah. There are things that you remember that are not good that you can't forget. Okay. All right. Okay. And they eat at you. And nobody know only yourself. Yeah. And house. you and I have learned how to deal with that, okay. which makes us good professionals. There are people walking around who haven't learned to deal with it, okay. and that's why many of us have jobs. Okay. All right? Mm -hmm. All of us have things that we have, decisions that we have made, even on a spur of the moment, that hurt somebody mm -hmm. or did something that we wish we'd never I done. Done is done. Yeah. You can't get rid of it. You can't take it back. You yeah. can learn to forgive, but yeah. you can. But learning to forget—that's yeah. really hard. Yeah. yeah. But we can move forward. Well, to always. Yeah. yeah. To, to, we cannot. One time, one professor told me, "You cannot pay back for somebody love you, but you can pay forward to yeah. give love to other people." Well, then what? what the Americans call soccer. Soccer? Soccer. Okay. You, know, you and I know it's football. Yeah. You always want to be on the front foot. That means uh -huh. you're moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. Maybe uh -huh. the other team depends and react. Okay. So that's what the tournament, you know, and I think, I think as a university, and I'll close with that, yeah. we always want to be on the front foot. Okay. Even through the pandemic and everything yeah. went on, yeah. I think people here work really hard yeah. to stay and be on the front foot. Yeah. So that play soccer. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Wow. I will say this. Sometimes the best thing you can do is do nothing and just sit around and Enjoy listen to the world sleep. around you and do something that makes you happy. Oh. Every day, do something that makes you happy. Wow. Right. Okay. Okay. So before we conclude this, give us a, a best suggestion one more time. I just did. Do something every day uh -huh. that makes you happy. Do something every day makes you happy. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter what other people think. If it makes you happy, 
long as you are happy, yeah. you are good. Well, you know, like I said, go someplace where you'd be happy. Okay. Take a job where you'd be happy. Okay. You know? Don't spend your life working for a place that makes you unhappy. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you for giving me a place I can enjoy very much. You, you earn every minute of it. Yeah. Every. I earn every moment. And yes, I grow every yeah. second. Never regretted it. Never looked back. No. Neither of us. Thank you. Yeah, Thank okay. you for that. Big hugs. Thank you for me <laughs> yeah. to encourage me to be fang mei. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad to do that. You, yeah. You've always just been fang mei. I just turned you loose. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Never fail us. I'm this, has been, this has been fun, dear. I really yeah. enjoyed it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.